hello again. It's uh, DIY Woodworker here. Uh, wasn't going to show this, <clears throat> but I got to thinking about it. I thought, well, maybe there's some of you that uh, don't know this or haven't done this and would like to see how it was done. I've got this eight foot plywood I need to cut. I need to rip it lengthwise. I didn't have any way to cut it that way without a uh, circular saw jig. Now I've got a circular saw jig over here, a little small one, but it's not big enough to cut eight feet. So this morning I had to uh, create an eight foot long uh, plywood jig. Now what I did is I took one of my pieces of plywood here, uh, laid it face down, and I measured out the distance here of uh, a little over nine inches, well eight and three quarter inches it come out to be, about nine inches when I started cutting it. And I took a piece of strapping that I had, measured it off the distance, eight and three quarter that I needed, screwed this down to the ply and then took my saw and ripped this big piece, big wide piece here off. Then I took, moved my strapping over again another, oh, three and a half inches plus the width of my saw shoe and ripped a smaller piece here on top. Then I took the smaller piece, I measured my shoe the, from the outside of my saw blade to the inside of my shoe, and it's three and three quarter inches. So I took that measurement and set this over here three and seven eighths inches. Now, I set it three and seven eighths all the way down, made sure that this piece was straight. Everywhere I got a screw, I made sure that that was three and seven eighths inches off the milled edge of my plywood. And then I took my saw and I ripped that down. And what I ended up ripping off was this little flimsy piece of wood here. This is, this is my off cut here. Now what I've got is a 12, 8 foot long uh, saw guide for ripping plywood. Put your saw here on the base. Y'all seen this all before, you know how this works. You put your saw on the base, and if you cut down the saw, it cuts right on that edge. So I'll go ahead and cut that. Now, something else I want to mention is that when you cut your plywood, you should know this, if you don't, always cut your plywood face down, your good side down. As your saw is circulating up, as you cut, it will come up through that wood, cut your clean edge on that face side, and you'll get minimal uh, tear out on the back side, which shouldn't matter because it's usually the inside is hidden and you won't really see it. But something else I've done, uh, I went and got rid of my uh, saw blade that came with my uh, circular saw and I bought me a 42 saw here. This saw has 40 teeth on it and uh, it gives you a really, really fine uh, cut. Now this is the upside here, this is the back side of the plywood. And as I look down this plywood, there's not the first hint and indication of tear out on this plywood. I got a perfectly smooth uh, cut on this plywood. So the bottom side also, the front side, or what we see the front side of the wood is absolutely smooth, and the back side is absolutely smooth. So if you're going to be cutting plywood uh, with your circular saw, I recommend that you invest the Oh, this blade wasn't that much. I think it was less than uh, twenty dollars. It's a Dewalt 40, 40 tooth ultra fine finish forty tooth blade, and it makes all the difference in cutting your plywood. So uh, invest that money, get you a good uh, blade that cuts your uh, plywood, and uh, you'll be more than happy with it. Okay, I'm gonna cut this video off. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my plywood. I'm going to cut all the plywood for my uh, three foot uh, uh, cabinet first. Uh, then I'll cut the 53 inch cabinet later. But I'm going to go ahead and do the smaller cabinet first. So you don't need to watch me marking and cutting and ripping wood. Uh, I'm sure you've seen that before. So 
Uh, once I've got that all cut and ripped to size, I'll come back and we'll go to the router and we will uh, put the tongues on this plywood where there need to be tongues and I'll cut grooves where there need to be grooves and uh, we'll show you that. So until then, uh, this is the DIY woodworker and we'll uh, talk at you later. Hello again, it's the DIY woodworker here. Well, we're making some progress. Uh, I've got on my table here my top and bottom pieces of plywood to cut the length and the width, rip. And uh, over here, I'll show you in a minute, I got the sides already cut, the grooves cut in them, and the tongue cut in them, and, and match, my, match my face frame up with my sides so I can get a measurement from inside to inside to this length of the top and bottom table. Take that inside measurement and then add a half inch because it inserts a quarter inch in each groove. So I'll uh, pan over and show you that in a minute and then I'll come back. Okay, there's the two sides stuck in the face frame as you can see. Standing up, the grooves are cut in the top. The grooves along the front face frame and in the bottom are grooves cut in. Now those are set up so when I cut the tongues and grooves into the top and bottoms they can slip in there and we'll have a biscuit joint basically that's what I was trying to say the other day and it wouldn't come out. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm almost 70 and uh, I have brain farts from time to time. I know what I want to say, but it won't get from here to here. So anyhow, it'll be the same as putting a biscuit in, but it's a one long piece and it glue that whole surface. So you get a tremendous amount of strength. Plus the way this is set up from uh, Summer Fail Tools, their bits are set to where when you cut the grooves and the tongues, that outside mating surface comes up perfectly flush and I'll uh, demonstrate that to you here in a minute. But right now I want to go ahead and uh, cut the grooves in this top and bottom uh, piece of the cabinet and I'll turn the video off because i got to change bits and get set up to, to cut my tongues and when I'm ready to cut my tongues I'll come back to you. So uh, bear with me, it'll get a little noisy but I'm going to cut these grooves show you how that works. As with all of the uh, summer fail tools, uh, tools and cabinets you build, you build the, the, the good face or the good side down, as he says, or the good side against the fence when you're cutting a groove. You always cut on the bad side of the wood.
uh, probably about the longest piece I'll ever run a groove on. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to stop the film right now, catch my breath, and uh, go ahead and change my bits and run this other groove. Okay, folks, there it is the basic box for my cabinet. It's laying on its face frame now, as you can see, but I've got the sides and the top and bottom on, and they're all in their tongues and grooves. I don't know if this groove will show up here or not, but you can see it there. That's a groove down each side here in the front, and the groove on the top. And you'll notice this face right here that's just perfectly smooth across here, that's the way that's supposed to be. There's my face frame where the groove board went in the face frame. And a groove here. And of course along the front I had to pull a clamp on there to get it to stay straight. Now, once I glue these, this groove will act like a giant biscuit all the way down. The front, the back, and the sides. Uh, making a solid glue joint. Making a very solid glued cabinet face. Now that up here where the clamps are, that's the top. I'll set that back up on the front of course to be doors. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to go with four small doors or two large ones. I'll make that decision later after I have the shells in. So the next thing to do is to cut my shells to the length, put them in and get them all mounted and glued and screwed in. That'll be the next video. So for now, I'll sign off. This is the DIY Woodworker saying have a nice day.